Uh, now we move on to our first news story of the month, and good goodness me, this this thing, this this is earth-shattering news. Brace yourself. Are you ready? Are you strapped I am, in? Yeah, okay. I, 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 okay. I am. I am. I, the oxygen. The oxygen is ready. The, yep. <sighs> Breathe and carbon dating. It seems is fatally flawed. And, and and it may well be that, 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 that a fundamental principle upon which we rely to date archaeological artefacts and finds may actually be a flawed science. Well, I mean, I'm going to just go away to lie down in a darkened room. I know, and... I know, I know. Cats and dogs living together, it's just... Yeah. <laughs> Basically, what you're saying is somebody's published a paper which uh, questions uh, some of the uh, nuances of radiocarbon dating, which has been in use for the last 50 years. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. And actually, uh, the reason I think the reason why, <laughs> the reason why that particularly dry and sarcastic opening was worthwhile is that this is precisely actually the the angle that unfortunately is being taken by uh, unfortunately actually the the the, the newspaper associated with the, uh, the institution itself that did the research behind this. So Cornell University did a study that showed that uh, in some places carbon dating may well be out by as much as, are you ready? Yeah. 19 years. 19 years? 19 years. It's, uh, and, and th now that's... Uh, that... Hang on, can I just interrupt you a <laughs> When I first started reading about archaeology as a teenager, uh -huh. we were going through the whole bristlecone pine, calibrating of carbon dates, and we were redating prehistory by 500 to 1,000 years. Exactly. So, you know, uh, and, and also, 20 years is probably, it's barely a generation. It's, it's nothing in that sense. And also, frankly, in, case, in the case of, uh, as you say, especially prehistoric sites, that's often within the margin of error <laughs> for these things. Well, yeah. Um, at the time of, of people like Mortimer Wheeler, and, and you'll be mentioning, I think, Wheeler later on in this 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 month's um, watching brief. Um, they were having to to construct uh, data and and uh, calibration curves using tree rings, this kind of thing that that helped us essentially use the evidence from carbon dating to more accurately date finds because things can affect the, the half-life of carbon, more carbon can be taken on by certain art artifacts in certain situations or for example uh, it's been shown that monks often are a bit a bit difficult to carbon date from their bones because they had a high fish diet and uh, water actually absorb, absorbs carbon in a different way to air so if, fish actually will affect your your own carbon date and and, and, in, and in fact the um when we, when i was uh, prepping no no I mean we were going to be discussing this when i was, when I was prepping the um the, the subject uh, i came across a, a wonderful um, rebuttal actually of a, a creationist uh, use of carbon dating mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where they were arguing that uh living fresh li, 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 living muscle uh, living muscles the the shellfish um, can uh, give carbon dates of hundreds of years old and therefore carbon dating cannot be used to date archaeology and uh, therefore the uh, you know, the b biblical creationism is true. Um, I the reason I being I, that, I I the, that the shells absorb limestone which, uh -huh. um, for, uh, which uh, has a different carbon-14 half-life to current... Um, uh, uh, current, current, current uh, uh, um, or give, give, gives the uh, gives the muscles a, 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 a different half life to, to current living ob other current living Stop objects that don't them. absorb yeah. that from the environment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you know we have we have this. Um, it, it, the, well, but carbon carbon dating seems to be one of those things in archaeology that it can be what you want it to be. Well, it's funny you should say that. It, it, but, well, I mean, we should we we should we should we should not just stop on that because because <laughs> if it can be if it can be what you want it to be, then it's all, it's also useless. But it's funny you should say that in so much as yeah. I think archaeologists often need uh, a better grounding in what carbon dating is. Yes. I, I've I've been in various situations and lectures where 
uh, you know, the, the person at the front has basically said, well, then we sent off these things to the carbon dating lab and magic happened and we got a date back of. And uh, this is another argument for archaeologists being just a bit more rounded and grounded when it comes to especially radiocarbon yeah. dating. But also actually... We've, I think we've talked in the past about being more, a bit more au okay fait with, say, geological processes as well. Strate yes. Stratigraphy formation, this kind of thing, would be very useful uh, in these moments. Because because actually what yeah. what this leads to, if, if within standard archaeological practice you have people jokingly going, I don't know what happens, it's just, it's just wonderful magic, then yeah. you get articles like, for example, this one from the Silicon Republic, carbon dating accuracy called into question after major flaw discovery. That is the kind of thing that someone will lift and just plonk into their their their, their um, creationist essay or their their sort of their video ty tirade against mainstream archaeology without actually giving it any any um, context or any uh, any proper weight uh, and and use it as a way just to tear down legitimate archaeological dating. It is not helped yeah. by the fact that actually somehow. Uh, Cornell, um, Cornell's newspaper, it seems, there at least their online edition of, of a newspaper for the university, uh, mm. quotes. Uh, well, no, well, first of all, sorry, they have a headline that says "New Radiocarbon Cycle Research May Alter History," but it's very specific history. So, for example, they 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 uh, they quote um, one of the authors of the paper uh, in saying uh, that uh, scholars working on the early Iron Age and biblical chronolo chronology in Jordan and Israel, for example, are doing sophisticated projects with uh, radiocarbon age analysis, which argue for very precise findings. Now, this this is important because often in that context, you're dealing with things that have a political angle as well. So if someone's making an argument about when exactly a certain group of people moved into an area or moved out or mm. the interplay between different groups, and that has an implication for broader things that are happening in the world today, namely the legitimacy of the state of Israel. Um, then actually, that 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 is very important, and and, and uh, you can see why that would that would have implications. But again, we're talking about nineteen years. You know, if the if, if you're dating, for yeah. example, uh, an ancient uh, Jewish artifact, it's still been found there. And if it's nineteen years out, then yes, okay, you have to change the timeline, but. This isn't a reason to tear it all down, and I think it's it's a it's a very dangerous yeah. thing to do just to jump on uh, again this idea of sort of selling a story and leading to headlines like you know major flaw accuracy called into question you know it, it's hmm. a a absolutely yeah, like any science uh, carbon fourteen is an evolving uh, it's, it's an evolving subject I mean funnily again I. I, I Pull off my uh, bookshelf. Um, this is um, dating the past by uh, Frederick Zoiner. Zoiner was at UCL, you know, uh, the, the Institute of Archaeology at UCL in the in the forties, and this was this book was published in nineteen forty five, and it's about it talks about scientific dating. Uh, sorry, nineteen forty six, um, and it talks about scientific dating, but it's a, it's talking about geological dating primarily. This is just pre pre carbon fourteen. This was a standard archaeological dating textbook mm -hmm. at the time. And it's mm -hmm. fascinating to look at the attempts to use other sciences and geology and stratigraphy, uh, geological stratigraphy, to, 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 uh, and to feed those into archaeology in a way that was practical. Mm -hmm. um, very shortly after this, you get the recognition that C14 can be measured in uh, the remains of what had been living objects. And that its half life can therefore give you a date. Yeah. Uh, its radioactive half life. And, uh, and ever since then, in the early 1950s, it, it's been a matter of the evolution of the techniques. So that we, you know, in the 70s, we had the calibration using tree rings, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. most famously with the bristlecone pine, but also you know, there's now uh, uh, the, the marriage of carbon 14 with dendrochronology. Mm -hmm. So you can cross check. Uh, and, and then more recently, with the advent of easy. Uh, high power computing we've had the the new mathematical models which again can take a a, a, a set of carbon 14 dates and apply some very clever mathematical equations to them and come up with again with a, a date that can fine it down to decades but which... and also that, that there have been for example uh discussions surrounding the so-called plateau around is it two or three thousand years ago there's a there is a a, a something that affects carbon dating 
uh, around about that time. But the point is, this this research, this ongoing, this is where the field is evolving, is an understanding of the aspects that affect the principle of yes. radiocarbon half life. But nonetheless, the principle is sound, and carbon uh, fourteen has a very useful half life in so much as compared to 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 elements which, which have a much longer half life. The resolution is, or an incredibly is, short one or an incredibly short one uh the resolution yeah. is actually very useful for for dating human activity so yeah it, again it's, it's one of those things where you know and i'm sure on the title of this 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 segment on 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 uh on youtube when we break this down into segments i'm sure it'll be quite a sort of a dramatic sort of oh you know carbon dating doesn't work but that's that's exactly what i want to tr to try and highlight is the fact that people will point to this this ongoing development of the 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 checks provisions and caveats that need to be in place in order to use the method properly as mm. an argument against it working i mean a, a good just to sort of i suppose to to summarize it a good a good uh, analogy would be to say that it, for example in in medicine one should stop using a certain uh, a certain drug because it has certain side effects but the thing is, once you once you know what the side effects are, you can account for them. You can inform the patients. You can counter them with other other medication. It's all about making use of this stuff in the right way. And I think, uh, if I'm honest, I think Cornell has been a little bit um, uh, irresponsible, uh, possibly in, in 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 certainly in house allowing that sort of headline. Um, obviously, they can't control what people do with the press release in their own websites. No. But it, this could have been presented in a slightly, a slightly more, well, frankly, actually, a slightly more inclusive way, a way that doesn't just say the magic is flawed, <laughs> rather to say, actually, yes. this isn't magic, folks. And this is actually part of how we make proper use of, of radiocarbon dating. This will have an implication, for example, in the Middle East. But ultimately, this is this is this is the science. We're doing good work. Thank you for coming to our website. You know, exactly. And and. and very very few experiments completely invalidate a previously understood scientific principle certainly not in the late uh in in in, in the early part of the 21st century or first mm. decades of the 21st century you know, it, we are in a, in a in a world really of incremental change yeah yeah um who, you know who knows what might come out of the you know large hadron collider in terms of the you know the most Obscure and and, and, and uh, it, you know the extreme extreme ends of theoretical physics, uh, but until you know uh, until that happens and we find we're part of the multiverse and all the rest of it, um, we are where we are. And, and until we discover that we, we have these well-established tools that we're now sh we now resharpen every so often to get a better edge. Yes, no, exactly, exactly. Yes. So I was going to say until we discover that somewhere I'm Batman. <laughs> Then, then this, this, this is. But then, even frankly, even when we do discover that it, there's a universe out there where I'm Batman, uh, <laughs> um, this process is an important ongoing process, and the refinement yes. of the technique. Uh, uh, frankly, if 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 we if we weren't trying to refine the technique, I would be I would be concerned. If we were still using calibration models and curves from the 1970s, when samples had to be huge compared to what they yeah. the, what they can be today then it would be it would be a, a, a dodgy state of affairs so Absolutely. so we can relax carbon dating is in fact intact and it's an ongoing an ongoing learning experience and we should also add other methods of dating archaeological material are available yeah yeah thermoluminescence being one of my favorites in fact yeah uh, I have a video on our kiss about that. You can check it out if you want to. Um, <laughs> I, I've got a real soft spot for dendro where it's available. I love oh, dendro. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Dendro, dendro is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to date it, then you can. No, you should have put a ring on it. Oh, never mind. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay, moving on. Moving on. 